Hi class, with this video we start the last topic of our course, the topic of asymptotic expansions. Asymptotic expansions are everywhere in physics, and most likely it's something that's somewhat new to most of you. Um, in calculus, we usually talk about convergent expansion, so I've written kind of a generic convergent expansion here. f of x is the sum of some functions a n of x, uh, where n presumably runs from, say, 0 to infinity. It has the property that each successive term in the expansion, a n plus 1 of x, if you divide it by a n of x, the previous term is less than 1. Um, so that we could imagine by taking the sum of the first n terms, we get some reasonable approximation to the function that gets better and better as we add more terms in the series. Uh, a typical example that we're used to is Taylor series where these functions a n of x um, are actually just constant a sub n times x to the n and depending on how this a sub n grows uh, we have a certain radius of uh, convergence of the series which could be as large as infinity. Now what do we really mean by a conversion expansion? We mean this expression the left-hand side, f of x, equals the right-hand side, the infinite series, for fixed x. That means that if we consider the partial sum of the first capital N plus 1 terms in the, in the series, Sn of x, then um, for fixed x, the sequence, Sn of x, converges. So as we add more and more terms, this is a convergent sequence. It converges to the value of f of x. And this all happens for some x fixed within the range of convergence. And that's typically what we mean by um, a convergent expansion. In Taylor series or in others, we might have a radius of convergence, and this series will converge for some x less than some absolute value. In contrast, many of the expansions in physics aren't actually convergent expansions. I'll give you some physical intuition for that later. Um, here, we're interested in simply approximating the function f of x in terms of a series. And we're interested in the behavior of the function around in the neighborhood of some particular point x0. So we write f of x is asymptotic to this series a sub n, um, sum on n a sub n of x. As x approaches x0, as I've written here, from the positive direction, I'll say more about that in a minute. What we mean by that is that if we take the... Um, difference between the value of the function and the partial sum of the first nth terms, which ends with a sub n of x, and we look at that difference divided by a sub n of x, and we take the limit as x goes to x0 from the positive side, this goes to 0. That is that the error in the partial sum is less than the size of the last term as x approaches x0. Notice here we're considering uh, for the, the convergence of the expansion for fixed x, here we're considering the behavior of the expansion as x approaches x0. Now, I want to reiterate, these a sub n are some set of functions which decrease in size, so in particular, in this case, the limit as x goes to x0 from the positive side of a sub n plus 1 of x over a sub n of x goes to 0, so again, each term, each successive term in the limit as x goes to x0 is smaller. As I've, as I've noted here, um, asymptotic series are typically handed. They depend on which way you approach the limit, on whether x, say, if, if you're talking about real values, x goes to x0 from the right-hand side, from positive x, or x goes to x0 from, from the negative side. As we'll see, uh, those can give very different answers. This actually has a very nice generalization in the complex plane. Uh, we will sometimes be interested in asymptotic series which are uh, in the complex plane, so f of z is asymptotic to sum on a sub n, as z goes to z naught. Now here, in the complex plane, we actually talk about the range of, um, of validity of the asymptotic series as being a wedge in the complex plane. And this limit, the same limit that we discussed uh, above, that the difference between f of z and the partial sum divided by the, the, the uh, last term, that should be an a sub n, that last term goes to zero as z goes to z zero, as long as z goes to z zero within the wedge, as I've uh, noted here on the right. So there's a very big difference then in, in the formal definition of a convergent series and an asymptotic series. An asymptotic series is always trying to approximate the value of the function around some point, and we're interested in how fast the error uh, in the approximation goes to zero as, the, as you look at the behavior of the function near that point. So how does this actually occur in physics? Well, it turns out it occurs in differential equations all the time. This is kind of a standard second order differential equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x times some function a of x times dy dx plus another function b of x times, this should be a b of x times y, excuse me, times uh, b of x times y of x equals zero. That's a 
uh, ordinary second order linear differential equation. Um, we're often interested in the analytic structure or the behavior of the solution y of x and you can show there's a theorem in the theory of differential equations that if a of x and b of x are smooth functions if they say have a Taylor series around some point then so does y of x y of x is well behaved around that point we have seen examples where a of x and b of x are singular often we're interested in a of, say the behavior of a of x around a particular point x0 such that it diverges linearly like 1 over x minus x0 so x minus x0 times a of x exists and x minus x0 times b of, uh, squared times b of x exists. That's called a regular singular point. Um, Bessel's equation and a number of equations in mathematical physics are that form. In that case, one has a Frobenius series instead of a Taylor series. But there are many examples, and we'll see some, where the a of x and the b of x don't uh, have simple poles and double poles. Uh, instead, they're more singular than that. In that case, there's typically not any kind of a convergent expansion around the point x equals x0. Instead, there's an asymptotic expansion around x go going to x0. And there could be very different behavior as x approaches x0 from the right or x approaches x0 from the left. So that's one example when we get asymptotic series. A more common example, and the way we'll often see it in physics, is that most perturbation expansions in physics are actually asymptotic. Um, there's an old uh, uh, joke in physics that says all problems in physics that can be exactly solved can be reduced to the harmonic oscillator. Um, that is almost essentially correct. Um, but often what we're interested in is perturbing around that solution to see if we can understand the behavior uh, if, the, if it's, it's close to, say, being a harmonic oscillator or different. So literal, literally here, we might be interested, say, in quantum mechanics, in the solution for Schrodinger's equation uh, for a potential which has a harmonic term, the harmonic oscillator, k, k over 2 x squared, but also has an on and harmonic term, lambda over 4 x to the fourth. Now, suppose we consider the behavior of this around lambda equals 0 uh, for a positive value of k. Well, then when lambda is greater than 0, then v of x is just this, a, a curve like this. It's bounded. Uh, and you expect that there are going to be well-defined well energy levels. There's going to be some discrete energy levels in quantum mechanics, which you uh, can calculate perhaps on a computer. But if lambda is less than 0, the potential looks extremely different. If lambda is less than 0, the potential is unbounded from below. And so while there might be some partial states that, that have uh, non-zero lifetimes in here, in general, there are no bound states of this potential. So that means the physical behavior of the system changes around lambda equals zero. If the physical behavior changes, then we wouldn't expect there to be a convergent expansion around lambda equals zero. So for example, we know that for a Taylor series expansion or for a Frobenius expansion, it converges in a disk. If it's going to converge in a disk around lambda equals zero, it'll converge both for small positive and small negative values of lambda. But small, we just showed that small positive and small negative values of lambda behave quite differently. So this is, an, ex this is an, a, a, um, an argument originally, I believe, due to Heisenberg, which argued that most expansions, in particular perturbation expansions like this, uh, couldn't possibly be actually convergent expansions. Instead, uh, we can show in many cases they are asymptotic expansions. Sometimes we're doing singular perturbation theory. So here's a differential equation, epsilon squared d squared y by dx squared plus y equals zero. This happens to be one for a constant epsilon that we can solve uh, exactly because it's essentially a harmonic oscillator equation as I uh, alluded to before. Uh, but if we think about the character of the solution as epsilon goes to zero, the order of the equation changes, right? The order when epsilon equals zero is just a constant y of x equals zero. Uh, but for epsilon non-zero, it's a second order linear differential equation. So um, one typic, one example, and one we'll talk about toward the uh, end of the semester, is when one introduces, when one has a small parameter in a differential equation, uh, who, which controls the leading term, the leading behavior in the equation, and, and that in the limit, the order of the equation changes. Typically, in those cases, we will be able to find a series expansion in epsilon. That series expansion, though, will be an asymptotic expansion in epsilon, not a, a convergent expansion. The final example of where we get asymptotic series, and one where we'll be spending a substantial amount of time in the uh, next uh, couple of lectures, uh, are um, functions defined in terms of integrals. And here it's easy to give, uh, here's the classic example uh, 
of an integral with an asymptotic expansion. f of x is the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus t over 1 plus xt dt. And we're interested in the behavior as x goes to 0 from the right-hand side. Notice that for x positive and x negative, we get very different behavior. For x negative, the denominator becomes singular at finite positive t, and the, the function doesn't actually exist for any small positive negative, a uh, small negative x, excuse me. But for small positive x, it's perfectly well behaved. So uh, you can't possibly have a Taylor series expansion around x equals 0 because the behavior of the function is entirely different uh, for x greater than and for less than 0. Now, Suppose we close our eyes and do the following manipulation. Uh, we're interested in the limit x going to 0. So we could think of the xt down here as small. You might worry that, after all, t goes to infinity, so xt could be large, but that's being controlled by the e to the minus t upstairs. As t gets large, e to the minus t is small, so the, the contribution from large t should be controlled. So if I just think about the, the um, expanding when xt is small, 1 over 1 plus xt is just the sum of a geometric series. I can write this, I write this question mark here because I'm not entirely sure what this manipulation means. We'll show it in a sec, see what it is in a second. Is the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus t sum n going from 0 to infinity of minus xt to the n dt? Because if I think about this geometric series, sum on minus xt to the n, I just, if I, if I, um, if I uh, sum it, I just get 1 over 1 plus xt. Now, I'm going to do something that mathematicians would disagree with. I'm going to interchange the order of the integral and the summation. But again, because of this e to the, controlling e to the minus t term, I have some hope that maybe this makes sense. I'm going to factor out the minus x to the n, uh, and I'm going to bring out the sum. So this thing becomes sum n going from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n x to the n times the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus t t to the n dt. Many of you may, rem may um, uh, remember or, or recognize this as um, basically gamma of n plus 1 or it's n factorial. So this function, if I do this manipulation on it, is represented by this series, sum zero from n going from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, n factorial x to the n. This is very, very different than any kind of a Taylor series expansion you would ever see. Its radius of convergence, if you formally uh, compute it, is given here. Its radius of convergence is 0. But we already knew we weren't likely to be able to get, we couldn't possibly have a Taylor series expansion for this function because for x negative, however small, it's going to be singular. But if you look at the difference between f sub n and say the partial nth partial sum from this, you see that the nth partial sum is proportional to x to the n plus 1. So in the limit as x goes to 0, the difference between the nth partial sum and, and the function divided by x to the n is 0. So this is an asymptotic series. It's asymptotic as x goes to x0 from the positive side. You might say, well, is this really useful? Because we are actually interested in finding the value of the function at some uh, value of x, which is not exactly 0. Um, so, uh, sorry, this should be as x goes to 0 from the positive side. So you might wonder if this actually has any, any purpose or any meaning at all. Well, if you actually plot the value of the function versus the partial sum, uh, as a function of, uh, of how many terms that you take, you'll find that with one term or two terms or three terms or four terms for some fixed x, um, it's, it's not a very good approximation for a few terms, but eventually it, it settles down to be very close to the um, actual function. But then something interesting happens. Basically, because of this n factorial behavior here, if you try to improve the approximation by taking more and more terms, ultimately the error starts to increase again. So with asymptotic series, there's typically an optimal number of terms that you can take in order to get a good approximation to the function. So it turns out asymptotic series are very, very useful. We will see examples of asymptotic series where only the first two terms gives a very good approximation to the, to the function, say the solution to the differential equation that we're interested in. So asymptotic series are everywhere, they're very useful, and they're often all that we have. And we will spend the rest of this class talking about asymptotic expansions, first asymptotic expansions of integrals, and later asymptotic expansions of uh, differential equations, of solutions to differential equations.